Today I'm going to show you how I created these two cats using old wicker vases I found at a thrift store and paper mache paste and clay. First I had to make my paper mache paste. And it's pretty simple ingredients. I'll put the recipe in the description. But it's basically one cup of flour, one cup of hot water, and you want to mix that really well so there's no lumps or globs or whatever in there. Then I add a quarter a cup of wood glue and a quarter-ish. You don't have to have exact measurements. If your paste is too thick, add a little bit more water. If it's too thin, add a little bit more flour. Once you start working with it, you'll find out what kind of consistency you prefer. I didn't show it here, but I also add three, four tablespoons of liquid starch. Once it's all mixed up, I just transfer it into this um, sealable container so I can pop the lid on if I'm not using it and it keeps it from drying out. I've completely wrapped the vases in masking tape and now I'm working on the heads. So this is little tin foil balls that I'm using to kind of create his little snout, like his nose and his, his mouth and those little cat cheeks. And then more masking tape, buy this at the dollar store by the way, and I'm just applying it to the top of the vase. So this is his head. Then I made some ears out of some stiff plastic and I covered it all with, with masking tape just so that my paper mache would stick. So both of them are done and now they're ready to go to start the paper mache part. So in all of these videos, I took them in time lapse. I don't know why, probably because I knew it was gonna be a long process, but, but you get the gist. Paper mache is just that. You're applying the paste with a brush and then you're applying the paper and you're pasting over it again. So it's pretty simple. Now to make your own sculpting clay, I use this Weather Shield insulation. It's just a blow-in insulation. You can buy it at Home Depot. And I mix one cup of your paper mache paste with a quarter a cup of drywall compound. Mix that really, really well. And then add that cellulose insulation until it's firm and workable like a clay. Super easy, super simple. And same thing, just store it in a resealable container so that you don't have to use it all at once or even in a bag, it's fine. So you basically work this stuff like you would any clay. One trick is to use your paper mache paste. Always have some paste handy because I just brush it on and then I'm able to just use my fingers and I can kind of smooth it out. So the consistency is a little bit better. If you're just using this, this clay, this specific recipe, it can be kind of lumpy and bumpy, but um, I found that using the, the paste to just kind of rub it on will give you a smoother finish. So I just went ahead and I used this clay and I sculpted this cat into this cat, basically. And keep in mind that this this paste, or this clay rather, has glue in it. So I'm literally just grabbing the clay and I'm sticking it onto my project and it sticks. This stuff dries like cement, it's crazy. It takes a long time to dry though. So the thicker, like this big cheek piece here, that took days to dry. So this isn't a project that you can hammer out in a night and be ready to go the next day. It doesn't really work like that. It takes some time to dry. So here I am, I'm just creating a little bit more character and his face. I kind of gave him these little eyebrows and I'm just smoothing it out with, with paste. You can wear gloves. I'm, I'm not really a glove person when it comes to this kind of stuff but um, it would help you keep all that glue and goo off your hands. And same thing with the tail. I just kind of pieced it together, um, rolled out the clay as best as I could. It's not really great for rolling out, but I managed to make it work. But see how that smoothing works? This is them after they've pretty much completely dried. You could still see some damp spots. And then I just go over the whole thing. I wanted the, the texture to be consistent across the whole piece because I wasn't sure how I was going to finish them yet. So I did paper mache then over the whole thing. Once they've completely dried, they're ready for finishing. 
So join me soon for part two where we tackle some fun new textures and paint finishes.